Hi, this is Adam Ginsberg, and welcome to episode number four of how to turn $1,000 into $100,000 using the Internet Mastery Bolo Deals. As always, with every video, I need to share with you that these are not income claims or promises. Everyone's results will vary, and everyone who has access to the Internet Mastery Bolo Deals, along with other IM technology, has paid for access to this service. The results will vary based on the use of the tools. And again, no promises are guaranteed or intended. With that being said, I am so excited that you are here for episode number four. If you haven't already done so, please watch episodes one, two, and three. In episode three, which was filmed just one week ago, you'll be able to see where our Internet Mastery community was in terms of its status. Let me go ahead and show you where we are today compared to where we were just one week ago. And so here you'll see our Internet Mastery community's success based on our real-time leaderboard. 38 orders and $1,057.94 have come in in the last five minutes. In addition to that, in the last week, we have surpassed more than $1 million in sales on Amazon. Our team and our community are now at $150,962,332.14. That's $150,960,000 sold on Amazon. And what's so exciting about this is that these are people that had never sold on Amazon or for attending one of our Internet Mastery events. I'm so proud of this community. And we're on our way now towards a billion dollars. And it'll be exciting to see how the Bolo deals really factor into that process. Now, before we jump into our Bolo deals for this episode number four, I want to talk about a topic at a very high level that I think is really important. You know, when it comes to sourcing as an arbitrage buyer, and ultimately arbitrage seller. What that really means is just simply buying from a supplier, buying low and selling high. We want to buy it for less and sell it for more. This has been going on now for 5,000 years. This is not a new concept. But when it comes to sourcing the sell on Amazon, there are really two different ways you can do arbitrage. Number one, you can source from a retailer. Now, when you source from the retailer, there are two additional opportunities here one is when you source in person, and the other is when you source online. But either way, the source is the retailer. So big box stores like Best Buy, Costco, Bath & Body Works, Macy's, Toys R Us, Belk, all of the major retailers are fantastic options. Now, you want to make sure that you're not sourcing from the following. And part of what I really want to do in this episode is to help you avoid some of the most common mistakes that Amazon sellers make when it comes to sourcing product. So those sources that you want to avoid at a very high level are number one, Walmart. You should never be sourcing your product from Walmart. As a whole, Amazon will not accept Walmart receipts for authenticity claims. And you'll find that almost everything purchased from Walmart will fall under this authenticity claim issue. So you want to stay away from Walmart. Now, all other major retailers are fine. And a commonly asked question is, well, what about Sam's Club? Because they're owned by Walmart. Yes, I know that. Sam's Club is not on the list. So we've got all the major retailers as approved vendors at this time but you want to avoid buying from Walmart because it could jeopardize your Amazon account down the road. Now, there are some other places that I really want to caution you on not buying from. One of them is eBay, and another one is Groupon, and another one is Overstock.com. There are certain websites that make it very difficult to verify the authenticity of the item particularly with eBay. There's a lot of to hype, you know, I, look, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything I shouldn't say. Far, far be it for me to cause any sort of controversy or drama. But at the end of the day, I started selling on eBay in 2001. 
I sold $20 million on eBay. My first ever YouTube videos in 2007 were all about how to sell on eBay. I wrote a best-selling book about how to sell on eBay. So there are very few people who know more about eBay nor like eBay more than I do. The challenge with buying from eBay and selling on Amazon are the receipts and the authenticity of the items. Remember that eBay is not a retailer. eBay is a platform where millions of people sell their items, used, refurbished, new, what have you. You can sell anything on eBay. But eBay is not the retailer. So eBay is not going to provide you with a receipt that identifies and authenticates the item that you're selling. So your items might be genuine, your items might be real, but you are playing with fire if you source your products from eBay. Now, you all know by now, you've heard me say this probably four or five times. I'm just here to make suggestions. This video, this series, this training, I'm just sharing with you 20 years of experience, tens of millions of dollars in sales myself online, and over $150 million in just the last few years in our internet mastery community selling on Amazon. So I'm just trying to bring to you that guidance and that information. You take with it what you like. If you wanna buy on eBay and sell on Amazon, if you wanna buy on Walmart and sell on Amazon, if you wanna buy from Groupon and sell on Amazon, you're, you're more than welcome to do all of that, of course. But at the end of the day, your Amazon account could be in jeopardy. And it is much easier to keep it clean than it is to fix it when you have a problem. On Amazon, you will always be guilty until proven innocent. So the real, the real process here, the real thing to think about from, again, the highest of levels, is, is the website you are buying from, is it a retailer or is it a platform? If it's a retailer and it's not Walmart, you're fine. If it's a platform where lots and lots of third-party sellers sell, and that's exactly what eBay is, eBay actually sells nothing, then you want to avoid buying product. Now, I know that the allure of buying from eBay is very real. The prices are fantastic. But again, you just have to protect yourself and you need to protect your business. I share all of this with you because you have to understand what's happening on Amazon. And a lot of times, it isn't the brand that has the issue that you need to be authenticated with. It isn't even the customers that think that there's something wrong with the items. It usually, these issues and challenges come from your competitors. I had experiences all the way back in 2014, 2015, before this became a thing. And Amazon had a process of reporting other sellers where I was buying from legitimate wholesalers, legitimate wholesalers. I never bought anything used. I only sold items that were new and I only bought from wholesalers. I wasn't even doing retail at that time. And I would list my items and then I would get these these messages from Amazon that somebody reported that my items are counterfeit, that they're not authentic, uh, and so forth. And what was happening was back then, the only way to really do this was that my competitors were buying my inventory and then reporting it as fraudulent, reporting it as counterfeit. Now, one mistake that people make is they ignore these messages from Amazon. You can't ignore them. You need to respond. Now, it doesn't mean Amazon will accept your response. It doesn't mean that they're going to allow you to sell that item when someone has reported it in your account as counterfeit. But you still need to respond to that message. So I got the verified uh, receipts for, and invoices from the wholesaler. I went through the process. Uh, and I got everything approved the way that it should have been because I was buying from authorized wholesalers. The, the point I'm trying to make is you're, the bigger your business gets, the more on the radar you become. And the bigger the threat you become to the bullies that think that you don't know what you're doing. You see, if you're brand new, you're doing it on your own. You don't have any help or support. You have no idea what this is all about. If you ignore the messages, you run the risk of 
getting your Amazon account suspended. And if you do it the wrong way, you also run your risk of getting your Amazon account suspended. And that is what these folks are hoping for. But now you're going to know exactly what you need to do. So there are some brands that are brands you can sell. These are companies that are in the brand registry, and these are brands that you want to stay away from. Now, what's really frustrating about all of this, and this is the part that uh, I didn't understand when I started, is this. When you list an item on Amazon, if it is brand restricted or category restricted, you have to apply to sell that item or that brand. Well, what happens? Amazon will tell you at that time what you need to do to apply. And more often than not, it's only going to fall into two categories. You're either going to click the button to apply and you'll instantly be approved. That's option number one. And we love when that happens. I'm going to do a few later. I'm going to go into all the ones I can find in the Bolo deals that are gated and see what we can get ungated. The second thing that happens is that Amazon will require you to provide invoices. Now, if you hit this roadblock, the only invoices that Amazon will accept are the invoices that come from a legitimate supplier. So retail invoices cannot and will not work to get you ungated if you're talking about what Amazon requires. Now, with the instant approval, you don't need to provide anything. But when Amazon says you need to provide invoices or receipts, those must be from a reputable supplier. Okay, so if you're not buying from a wholesaler, you're not going to get approved when it comes to that level of, uh, of, of necessity of what you need to provide. Now, this is the part that I had a problem with. This is the part that doesn't make sense to me logically. Amazon does so many things right. But when I talk about this, even as I'm sharing it with you, it doesn't make any sense. You go to list an item and Amazon lets you list it. There are no restrictions. There's no brand restriction. There's no category restriction. It's not gated. You go to list the item. Well, if you're going to list the item, well, sometimes two or three days after you've listed the item, Amazon will then gate you from that item. So you're able to list it. You're able to buy it. You're able to begin the process of sending it to Amazon for fulfillment, and then miraculously, you're gated in that item. Why wouldn't they just have you gated in the first place? I'm not really sure. It actually works the opposite way. When you list the item and it says you're gated and you click the button and you're instantly ungated, why did they block you in the first place if they were just going to make it that easy to list the item? That doesn't make sense either. But the bigger picture is how the sellers are working through this process. So sometimes you'll get a notification that says that Amazon shows you being reported for selling items that you're unauthorized to sell. This one is a little bit uh, less frequent, but you're unauthorized to sell it. Well, if you're unauthorized to sell it and Amazon has a problem with it, why'd they let you list it in the first place, you might ask? Great question. But the, the notification you're going to get more often than that is that your items are counterfeit and you'll have to send Amazon whatever details they ask for. Let me tell you why I'm sharing all of this with you, particularly when it comes to the Bolo deals, but just in general when you're product sourcing. Remember that you're running your own business. You have to understand what you're doing. You have to glean all of this knowledge and you have to know what you're looking for. And if you don't know what you don't know, it makes it a little bit harder. So we had a situation in our Internet Mastery community where about a half a dozen people started receiving uh, emails from Amazon that their items were counterfeit and their listing had been removed. And the, all of the emails were coming from the same supplier, a supplier called Merch Source. Now, after a doing a deep dive into this particular scenario, what I discovered was that Merch Source owns an Amazon seller account called Freehold Collective. So on Amazon, there's a seller. The seller's name is Freehold Collective. And when we go to that seller on Amazon, we can look up and see what their listings are. 
and they have at this time about 125 items listed on Amazon. Well, coincidentally, the items that were reported to Amazon from sellers as being counterfeit happen to be the exact same items that that seller is selling on Amazon. Now, coincidence? Not likely. Here's the thing. That seller might have a relationship with that brand. That seller might have the rights to be the only one to sell that item on Amazon. But when you do a lookup of the listings, you'll see that in many cases, there are 10, 12, 15 different sellers of that particular item on that particular listing. So this freehold collective doesn't have exclusive rights to sell that item on Amazon. However, what they're looking to do is eliminate as many of the competitors as possible. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you work hard enough and long enough and do your own research, you'll be able to find wholesale suppliers that provide you with the ability to buy these brands, Sharper Image, Discovery Toys, FAO Schwartz, that will be able to sell you those items wholesale and be able to provide you with those invoices that might be necessary to prove that those items are authentic. The fact of the matter is that it is not likely, now not impossible, but not likely on a high percentage chance that Amazon is going to accept a Macy's receipt to prove authenticity. Now, before you start to go into panic mode, if this is something you've been doing, recognize that it is possible. It, I didn't say it was impossible to use a Macy's receipt. It just has to be done properly. You have to provide the right Macy's receipt in the right format, in the right way, with the right verbiage and the message and the plan of action that you're going to be submitting to Amazon. And if you do that, it will help you to remove that strike and most likely get that ASIN reinstated in your account. I've seen that happen in multiple times, multiple occasions. But what's happening is that I just want you to understand the concept that it isn't that you can't sell all Sharper Image products. It's that the Sharper Image products that are you're going to be attacked for as being counterfeit are the ones that this Freehold Collective, in this example, that Freehold Collective is selling. Now, again, it's very possible that Freehold Collective has some type of rights. I don't know Freehold Collective. I'm just giving you a big 30,000 foot example. It's very possible that they have the rights to those items that they are listing, but I don't think they have the rights. Again, I could be wrong, but I don't think they have the rights to all FAO Schwartz, all Sharper Image, all Discovery. I don't think so. Because if you go to Macy's.com slash Toys R Us, and of course I talked about this in another video, if you went there and you looked up how many items are available for sale on Toys R Us, you'll find there's almost 15,000 items. And yet Freehold Collective only has 125 items listed on Amazon. So the likelihood, and you have to do your own research and your own due diligence, but the likelihood that what you're going to run into when it comes to having a challenge with a listing being counterfeit is that that item is one of the items that Freehold Collective has listed. So you should do your research and then cross-reference what items are going to be uh, listed by Freehold Collective and which ones you shouldn't sell. One of the things I've done is I've created a Google Doc with all of the ASINs that they currently have on Amazon. Now, this is a document that's updated about every 30 days. So I'm not going to tell you that it is 100% accurate 24-7, but it's a good cross-reference. So I'll post that resource below this video so you can click on it and check it out and see for yourself. But if, for example, you find a great deal, whether it's a Bolo deal or not, if you find a deal... And, it, and take a look on Amazon and see, is Freehold Collective one of the sellers? Take a look on the Google Doc and see if that ASIN is on the list. 
The reason I'm giving you those two options is because what if Freehold Collective is one of the sellers on that listing, but they sell out? Guess what? That ASIN will not show Freehold Collective as one of the sellers, but when they come back in stock, they're going to report you. So what you need to do is cross-reference the Google Doc, and if that ASIN, we're not going to remove ASINs. We're only going to add ASINs based on their inventory. As, uh, as those ASINs are posted, all you need to do is check out, make sure that your ASIN that you're wanting to sell is not on that list. Now, once again, I'm just giving you some advice here, okay? It is possible that you may list an ASIN that is not on this list, and you're still going to get some type of claim of counterfeit from Freehold Collective or Merch Source. That's possible. I don't think it's likely because I don't think they are policing the tens of thousands of listings for these items. I think the ones that they're aware of are the ones they're selling and they want to make sure that you're not. So at the end of the day, if it was me and I was doing my product sourcing, I wanted to keep my Amazon account clean, I would just avoid those ASINs. Now, if other sellers come to play and other sellers have a similar scenario that we become aware of, we'll add those to the Google Doc as well. We'll start to collect a master list of ASINs. And again, the big picture here is ASIN. Now, I want to just make sure you understand this is very different than when you're analyzing a listing and the seller on the listing is the same seller as the brand, those you never want to list on. So if your seller, if you have one seller on a listing and that seller is the same seller as the brand, stay away from those 100% of the time. That's not what I'm referring to here. Here I'm referring specifically to this issue with this particular seller that we've seen come up in our Internet Mastery community. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our Bolo deals. As I go through this process, I'm going to look at two different sets of Bolo deals in episode number four. The first set of Bolo deals are for one of our Internet Mastery students. I'm going to log into their account and I'm going to take a look and see what type of Bolo deals they have, what we can look at, what we can analyze, what we can decipher and see what's a good deal and what's not. Obviously, since I'm not in my own account, I'm not able to list the items, get ungated, go through that process. So I'm just going to run through a couple of Bolo deals, analyze what I see uh, in the student's account, then we'll log out, I'll log back into my account, and we'll go through the process again as if we were going to be able to list that item. There's a lot to unpack in today's episode, including what I've already covered. So I'm not going to be focused today on what I'm going to buy in my journey from 1,000 to 100,000. We're not going to focus on that for this particular week. This particular week, I just want to talk about what to look for, what's a deal, what's not a deal, and how powerful these Bolo deals really are. So let's go ahead right now and let's jump in. The first thing you'll see before I head over to the Bolo deals is that in the last few minutes since I started making this episode, our Internet Mastery community is up to 216 orders and $4,300 in sales. It's pretty exciting. All right, so my Bolo deals have loaded. And the, you'll see here that we've got one from Guitar Center, one from PetSmart. We've got one from LOL Surprise. We've got another from Guitar Center. We've got one from Albertsons, one from Target, one from Miniature Market, one from Macy's, another from Guitar Center, another from PetSmart, one from Macy's, Guitar Center, Entertainment Earth, Target, and Guitar Center. So lots of opportunities in these particular Bolo deals. I want to just start with this one here for a moment. And what we can see is that this deal is available on Target for uh, $17.35. And we can see that it's selling on Amazon for $29.99 with a net profit of 11% and a monthly estimated buys of seven units. So the first thing I would do is I would click on Target 
let's go to target and double check and confirm, see if there's any special opportunities. So we can see here that this is $17.35. We can also see that if we pay with our target credit card, we would save 5%. Then we'll take a look here on Amazon and we can see a few things. Number one, if we click on see all buying options, the first seller has it for $24.06. The second seller has it for $24.07. But the third seller has it for $29.99. So I want to bring up here for just a moment that uh, this sell price that we have priced it in at 11% is based on, in this particular case, the $29.99 price because that is the FBA price, the lowest FBA seller price, ships from Amazon and sold by One Happy Buying. Uh, this price here at 36 is FBM. The first two are FBM. So I'm going to come back here and take a look at Spy Rivals X and see uh, what the numbers look like here. And what we can see is that uh, the daily estimated sales are three a day, about 90 a month, as we said. And we can see that our estimated monthly buys are seven. So the number that we would buy is seven. Now, again, this technology, this concept of velocity, this process is really important. One of the biggest mistakes, and I've covered this before and I'll cover it again, one of the biggest mistakes that Amazon sellers make is they buy way too much inventory. They see what looks like a good deal. They may look at Amazon sales data, Amazon sales rank, which of course is not in real time, by the way, but there's no process for them to understand how many they should buy. Now, this concept of velocity, the speed of which you get your money back, is the single most important aspect to selling online. It's the single most important aspect to having your money make you more money. Just recently, I was having a conversation with a couple of people, two, three people. We were at an event and we were talking about storage fees. And one of the young ladies said to me, well, I didn't know that Amazon had storage fees. I didn't realize that I was going to have to pay fees so fast. And my question back to her was, why do you have so much inventory that isn't selling? You have to understand back in the day before the pandemic, Amazon was happy to be your warehouse. Amazon was happy to allow you to send as much inventory to Amazon as you had. There were no limits. This concept of, of inventory limits wasn't around three or four years ago. But today, Amazon imposes storage limits. Amazon charges fees. In fact, these fees are going up. So what you have to focus on is knowing what Amazon wants. Now, you and Amazon, you all want the same thing. Amazon wants people to sell on Amazon that have inventory that turns fast. Remember, the faster your item sells, the more Amazon makes. Amazon is not the big Amazon that they are because they make money on your storage fees. Amazon is going to make their money when your items sell so they can make their commissions and their fulfillment fees. The more your items sell, the faster they sell, the more Amazon likes you. The more your items sell, the more you like Amazon. So it's a love-love relationship here. But the point I'm trying to make is that when I asked this young lady this question, why do you have so much inventory? She looked back at me and said, well, how do I know how many to buy? And I said, well, this is where Spy Rivals is so valuable because Spy Rivals says buy seven. Now, you might sell seven in two weeks. You might sell seven in six weeks, but you're not going to have seven in six months. And so if you think about that concept, first of all, the faster we get our money back, the faster we could buy more inventory. And second of all, the faster we get our money back, the less we have to worry about any fees that Amazon is going to impose. So when you see this number, don't buy more. Don't buy 10x because it's a great deal. Just buy the number. And I recommend when you're new, buy less than the number. See, the single most important thing for a new person is for their confidence to be built. Someone who's sold a half a million, a million, two million, five million on Amazon, guess what? They know this works. 
Someone who's brand new, who's buying their first deal, and they're they're got all this negativity of all these people around them telling them that this doesn't work and this is a sham and who's going to buy anything from you and you're never going to make any money and the people are whatever, whatever, whatever. You all know what I'm talking about. We all have people like that in our life. And so what we need to do, what you need to do is sell something fast. Obviously, $151 million now in sales on Amazon. We know this works. We know it works. But do you know it works? And the best way for you to know that it works is for you to sell something and for you to sell out of something. So I would much rather you buy five than seven and get sold out and then go, oh man, I should have bought more. That's a way better feeling than buying 500 and then selling seven and wondering why you're paying all these storage fees. Now, just one last thing. We know that if we were going to buy this item for $17.35 and sell it for $29.99, we would make just under $2 for that particular item. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, if I'm going to make $2 an item and I'm going to sell seven of them a month, that's $14. That's not a lot of money. I, it's probably not a lot of money. Maybe it's a couple cups of coffee at Starbucks, or maybe it's a half a movie ticket at the movie theaters, at the dine-in. I, I don't know. But here's what I do know. I know that 14 becomes 20, and 20 becomes 50, and 50 becomes 200. And every single person who sells $500,000 a month on Amazon started at $14. You can't get to the higher levels if you don't sell the lower levels. My point is, if you're getting 10 bolo deals a week and one bolo deal out of your 40 bolo deals brings you $14, what do the other 39 deals bring to you? If you're buying the item from Target, that takes you about three minutes to check out. It takes you another one minute to combine to list the item and submit the prep form to get the item sent to the prep center. So we're talking about five minutes for a potential of about $14 in revenue. That's a pretty good use of your time. Also keep in mind that it may open other opportunities up that you may not have thought of before. Let's take a look at another Bolo deal. So in this case, let's talk about the Triscuits. So what we're going to see here is that at Albertsons, this item is listed for $3.59. So this item's on sale. $3.59. We can also see that when we head over to Amazon, this item is listed at $12.99. So we can buy it from Albertsons for $3.59, and we could sell it on Amazon for $12.99. So let's just take a quick peek here and see something. We notice two things. Number one, we notice that these deals are not good, meaning that we're only selling, Amazon sellers are only selling 0.65 a month and your monthly buys are 1.5. So in this particular case, this would not be a good deal and we would have to apply to be approved. Now, again, just as a reminder, I'm not in my own account. I'm in a student's account. After I do a couple of more in this account, I'll head over to my account and we'll see if we can get ungated in just following the process I outlined earlier. Now, before I leave this page, though, I just want to show you something. So when we scroll down, we can see a couple of things. We can see that there are bundles here of items. So you'll notice that this first one that comes up is a bundle of six. So what that means is that somebody has taken of uh, this item, this Triscuit Minis, and they've bundled them together. So a bundle of six is going to cost you approximately $19, $20. Now, if we pay $20 and it sells for $27, we're not going to be able to make a lot of profit on that item. There's also a couple of other things that I would avoid. Number one, it is also sold by Amazon. So I would recommend staying away from that. So Amazon is the only seller. There are no other sellers on this listing. So number one, it's not profitable. And number two, uh, number two is Amazon is the only seller. But the point that I wanted to make is that when you see a deal that is not a good deal, it doesn't mean you're done. 
it means maybe there's an opportunity in a bundle. Maybe there's an opportunity of selling a two-pack or a three-pack. Now, what's the difference between a bundle and a two-pack or a three-pack? A two-pack or a three-pack might be two, three, six of the same item, whereas a bundle might be different flavored Triscuits or different size boxes where you can mix and match and create bundles. So we're going to take a look at some other examples. But again, the big picture here is that the Bolo deals help you to identify and find potential opportunities. Very few people this morning woke up and said, I know what I'm going to sell on Amazon. Mini Triscuits. That's what I want. That's what I want to sell. My guess would be if you're watching this right now, that's not something you thought of. So what it does is it provides you with an opportunity and then you need to take these learning sessions and these trainings and these videos, watch them over and over again. Make sure, by the way, that you've clicked subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified of new videos as they occur. But the point is that the opportunity could be one of huge potential. Now let's take a look at another Bolo deal. Okay, so I'm back now in the Bolo deals and we're going to take a look at this one. So this is an eight gallon aquarium uh, from PetSmart with an eight gallon aquarium uh, on Amazon. We can see that uh, the monthly estimated buys are almost 13, 12.5. So what would you do? Uh, if it was me, I would probably buy eight or nine of them. I would uh, underestimate. Number two, it says my buy price is 193 and the selling price is 279. So let's take a look and see. I'll take a look at PetSmart where we can see that the item is available, uh, available to ship. We also can see we can buy as many of them as 90 units. So there's no issue with being able to get inventory. The second thing that we want to do is we want to click on the ASIN and head over to Amazon. And when we take a look at Amazon, there's a few things to notice. Number one, when we look at see all buying options, there is only one option. There's only one seller. And that seller is FBM. So with us having only one seller, and that seller being at $279 as an FBM seller, I would want to come in doing FBA at a higher price point, possibly $299. I'll keep it under $300, but we'll raise the price. So if we do that, that will actually change our profitability. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. So when I click on Spy Rivals X, we can see a few things. Here's my 12 of the month that are selling. And again, I would lower that number just to be conservative. We know that we could buy the item for $193. So $193 is our buy price. We know that we can sell it for $299. And we also see that no listing restrictions apply. So I'm going to click on Calculate Profit. It's going to tell me what my real profit is going to be. We can see that's right up there at 20%, $37.73 per unit. If I wanted to list on Amazon, since there are no listing restrictions, I could simply click the list on Amazon button. Now, let's just say, because it'll help me with my math, that we lowered the 12 down to 10 at $37.73. Again, what, what does that mean? It means that if we're properly buying this item, we can sell 10 units a month. 10 units a month at 30 plus dollars in profit per unit is now going to put me over $300 in profit from this specific Bolo deal. So yeah, the first one we looked at had a $14 profit. The second one that we looked at had a $300 profit. Now there's a couple of other points that I want to reiterate here. If you're receiving 10 deals a week, that's 40 deals a month. Let's just say for a moment that 20 of those deals generated $14 in profit. That's going to still give you an extra $300 for the month. Of course, this one Bolo deal is going to give you another $300 a month. Well, $600 a month is a nice little extra income on the side. But keep in mind that because a Bolo deal generates a certain amount of revenue, doesn't mean that that Bolo deal is not going to generate five more Bolo deals. Let me just give you an example 
of why I think this is so valuable for this particular listing. Let's take a look at what it shows on the Amazon page. What you can see here is that this listing has a variety of different items. These are called variations. So there's this one, which is black with the LED. Now what we'll see here is that this item is out of stock. Now this item is a little bit different. This item is not just the uh, black one as opposed to the white one, but this is a four gallon instead of an eight gallon. You see, there are multiple different combinations. There are four different items. There are two different series and there are two different sizes. So doesn't that mean that it's possible if we found one really good deal as a result of this Bolo deal? And on this particular listing, there are 12 different combinations of other items. Some are gonna be good and some aren't, but why not look into each of them and see what's possible? So this one that is sold out on Amazon could be a really good opportunity for us if it's on PetSmart. Let's take a look and see if it's there. And when I enter that title in the search box, we'll see what most people see, which is that the black one is simply not available. So in theory, our concept is good, right? We found the Bolo deal, we went to Amazon, we see that we can make a 30 plus dollars on every transaction. We then look to see if there are other colors or combinations based on this particular listing, these variations, to see if they'd be on PetSmart. Well, the one that we found is not available on Amazon. So we can have the ability to look at the data and say, is it selling? Has it been selling? What does it look like? But when we went to PetSmart, it wasn't available. Or was it? Let's look again. I didn't see it, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Did you see it? I don't think so. But it might still be there because sometimes everything is exactly as we think it is. And other times things don't always appear the way they should. So let's take a quick peek back and see if we find anything different in the second time we look. So this is the, the four gallon uh, and this is the white one. There's no black one. Let's just click on the white one. Wait a minute. When we click on the white one, there's a black one. If I click on the black one, the black one is now available. Look at this picture and look at that picture. That is the same item. What just happened? Why, why, when you search on PetSmart, do they only show the result in white? But if you click on it, you can see there's an opportunity to get the black one. Too often, we get so close to where we need to be, and then we don't go far enough. We get really, really close. There was a lot of people way back in 1800s that were mining for gold that crossed thousands of miles from the East Coast to the West Coast. And they gave up just before they found the gold. You got to keep looking. You're getting closer and closer. Remember that? Getting warmer, getting warmer, getting colder, getting warmer, getting colder, getting warmer. I want you to get really hot and I want you to be right there. So now let's just continue and see. It might be that this one is still not a good deal, but let's find out. Let's just look a little further. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back over to Amazon and I'm going to click on Spy Rivals X. And because this is a variation, uh, the numbers are going to be the same. Now, they're not always the same, but in this case they are. But what I really wanna do is I wanna look at Spy Rivals uh, data. So I'm gonna click Spy Rivals Lookup and I'm going to see what the options are. We're gonna look on historical data. Sometimes there's historical data and sometimes there is not. But let's take a look and see what this shows us. So we're looking for the third party price right in here. And what we can see is 277, 279. Uh, at some point it was selling for 209. 279, 229, you can see the price tends to vary. But for the last year or so, the price has been anywhere between 259 and 279. Now we've already determined that we're gonna sell the eight gallon, 
for $2.99. The four gallon is gonna cost us $1.44. So let's take a look in Spy Rivals and see what we can charge to make it worthwhile. And if it's uh, if it's if it if it's two fifty nine or less, then we're going to be in really good shape. Let, let's take a look and see. So I'm going to come over to the profit calculator now, and I'm going to type in one forty four. Then in the selling price, I'm going to type in two fifty nine, and click calculate. When I do, it's going to tell me what my ROI is going to be for this specific item. Now, what you're going to see here is that because our buy price is significantly less and because the item weighs less, obviously a four gallon weighs less than an eight gallon. So the cost of shipping and fulfillment is going to go down. Take a look at this. This item, our profit on this item is $52.73. $52.73. I'm going to lower that to $50 from 10 units. Okay, I need to spend a minute and do a collective recap of what we just experienced, just to make sure you fully grasp what I just did. Now, I don't plan any of this out, just so you know, I, I love doing this in this way, because for me to be able to find these deals in real time while we're making this video allows me to understand and share with you the power of what happens when you understand what a bolo deal really is. So we had a bolo deal in this account. It was for an eight gallon fish tank. We looked at it on PetSmart. We looked at it on Amazon. We determined that we can sell approximately 10 units a month at a little more than $30 profit. So what would most people do? They would just go on to the next bolo deal. And that makes sense. But imagine if you didn't get 10 deals a week. Imagine if you only got one deal a week, what would you do then? You certainly wouldn't let that be the only item you source for the week. So understanding how to find inventory and knowing that we're warm, we're in the ballpark of items that are popular and that are selling, what did we do? We looked on Amazon and we found that this particular item had a variation. And from within that variation, what did we do? We looked back at PetSmart to see if the one of the variations that we found was available. Now, why was this important? Because we know that that item is out of stock on Amazon. So we will be the only seller of that item. Then we looked at the historical data in Spy Rivals We see that the item is sold anywhere from 259 to 279 over the last eight to 10 months. So let's go on the lower end, why not? So if we buy it for 144 and we had to look because it wasn't readily noticeable that PetSmart even had this item, you might wanna rewind this and watch this back again a couple of times. We bought the item for $144, listed it on Amazon for 259, the historical average of what the item is selling for. And when we do that, our profit is exceeding $50 a unit. We can buy 10 units, that's $500 in profit. Now, I know that that's exciting, right? We went 300 here and 500 here, but that's not the takeaway. The takeaway is that we found a great bolo deal, but the big picture is because we analyzed other opportunities as a result of finding the bolo deal the first one that we looked at can generate more than the bolo deal itself now i shared with you there are eight variations i'm not going to go through all of them what if just one more variation generates us 200 dollars a month that means the byproduct of this one bolo deal is more than a thousand dollars in profit and I would be willing to bet that if you spend a little bit of time on this item and other opportunities that come from this item, you might even be able to double that. So the Bolo deals are so much more than just finding the low hanging fruit. Yeah, that's a great deal. I get it. The first one, the eight gallon is a great deal, but the four gallon is a better deal 
as long as you understand this process. So I'm, <laughs> I love this stuff, man. This is so exciting. You may be saying, okay, but what about my deals? I got all bad deals this week. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you need to tell that to someone else. There are no bad deals. What if the first one we looked at, what if that eight gallon wasn't selling at all? And then we clicked on the four gallon and we are able to sell 10 of them at $500 a piece. A bad deal is not a bad deal. A bad deal is just an opportunity to look for a good deal. But the good news is some of the good deals are already really, really good deals. Now, before I finish, because we've covered so much in this video, I just want to log into my account and click on one or two that potentially could be gated and see if I can get them instantly ungated. That'll bring this entire conversation all together. Let's just check it out and see. So now I'm logged into my Bolo deals. And what I really want to see is just what is gated and what is not. So I'm going to click on the first one and we're going to see if it is gated. I'll go to list on Amazon and it says you need approval to list this item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on request approval via Seller Central. I'll click on that link and it says you need approval to sell. I'll click on request approval and two things are going to happen. Either one, it's going to approve me or two, it's going to ask me for additional information. Let's click request approval. And you can see here that this is the secondary option, which requires me to provide invoices. So in this particular case, I am not going to be able to sell this item. So let's continue on with our Bolo deals and try it again. Let me close out this window here and take a look at this spam single classic. So I'll click on Spy Rivals Lookup so that I can see whether or not it is gated or ungated. Click list on Amazon and we can see here that it says I need approval to list this item. So I'll click request approval and then this button right here, request approval. And when I do, look at that, this item, uh, your selling application is approved. Congratulations, your selling application for brand spam has been approved based on your performance history. So there we did it. I mentioned to you at the beginning that there are two different ways to get ungated or to get your listings for restrictions removed. You have to try every one. So what'll happen is if you have 10 Bolo deals and eight are restricted, you'll be able to get unrestricted for at least two or three of them. Now, remember that what I just read to you said based on my performance. So if you're brand new and you never sold anything on Amazon, your likelihood and probability go down of what you get approved for. This is just part of being new. You're going to have to sell other things to build up your performance. The more Amazon trusts you, the more they like you, the more they will approve you. So uh, go through that process. Some you're going to need the invoices, some you're going to need the receipts, and some will be instant approval. But don't just, when you see it says restricted, don't just go away. That doesn't mean you can't sell it. It means you need to apply. There's no cost to apply. You can apply for as many of them as you want. Just know that if it asks you for invoices, retailer invoices will not work. Some will, some won't. So what? Just move on to the next one. That's the way the process works. So I hope you found this information here in episode number four helpful. I'm super excited about this series, the feedback that we've been getting. The results in our Internet Mastery community are phenomenal. If you're not a member of our Internet Mastery community, you can click the link below and you can check out the one hour free webcast that we have created for you to learn more about selling on Amazon and getting involved in Internet Mastery. I'm super, super excited about where these Bolo deals are going to take us on our journey from a thousand to a hundred thousand in selling on Amazon. I can't wait to see the results that our internet mastery community continues to get as a result of these Bolo deals. And I'll see you in episode five.